I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill me with the word desperately needed to sustain life. And let me speak in the name of God, the Father and Mother of us all. Amen. Amen. So, without shame and without regret, I confess to you that I stole a big kernel of this sermon from my dad. I did it on purpose because... John 10.10, John chapter 10, verse 10, is one of my father's favorite verses of all scripture. I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Truly, I tell you that my dad lived an abundant life. Now, he was never a rich man by any means. I think the most he ever made... Um, in his life in one year was like $25,000 or less. Um, He was not a rich man. He lived an abundant life. I remember when we were kids, at Christmas time, we'd get these Christmas cards from like all over the country from people that my father and my mother had ministered to, had loved, lives they had touched. We would get something like 750 to 1,000 Christmas cards every year. My father lived an abundant life. Now, here's the part that I'm stealing. He had an acronym for the word life. Love, identify with Jesus, forgive, enthusiasm. Love, identify with Jesus, forgive, and enthusiasm. He said, practicing these four things helps us live the abundant life that Jesus is giving us, that Jesus lived for us. That first one, love, might be the most obvious thing a churchman can say, right? We hear that all the time. God loves you. Long time ago, I got to hear Archbishop Desmond Tutu preach on January the 1st to a room full of college students. On January the 1st to a room full of college students. The man preached for 75 minutes. On January the 1st to a room full of college students. Somewhere in the middle of all that, I remember one line he said. He said he only has one sermon. This is Archbishop Desmond Tutu. One sermon. God loves you, full stop. God loves you, full stop. But it doesn't stop there. The good news doesn't stop there because not only does God love us, but when we love, when we love others and we are loved by others, we are literally participating in the characteristic of God. So much. Love is so much a characteristic of God. The scripture even tells us that God is love. So we get caught up in the divine when we love others and when we are loved as well. And it's part of living an abundant life. Next, identify with Jesus. Identify with Jesus. When we identify with someone, we see their story in us or we see ourselves in them. That's what it means to identify with someone. And throughout history, Christians have identified with Jesus most commonly with the suffering of Jesus. You read like the medieval mystics who wrote eloquently about in their own suffering being connected with Jesus on the cross and Jesus' suffering. And that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Indeed, it's a necessary thing. For when we are going through our own Good Friday moments, when we are going through our own trials and tribulations, when the darkness threatens to overtake us, 
it is very helpful to remember that Jesus has been there and done that. And got the stigmata to prove it. It's important to remember that God incarnate knows human suffering as intimately as we could. That's important. So we should identify with Jesus. And at times we should identify with Jesus' suffering. And we should identify with the life of Jesus as well. Jesus didn't just suffer for us. Mel Gibson got it completely wrong. Jesus also lived for us. Showed us what it is to love completely. So we should also identify with Jesus when he fed the hungry when he healed the sick, when he gave sight to the blind and release to the captives. We need to see ourselves in that story and see Jesus' story in us when he lived as well as when he suffered. So we love, we identify with Jesus, and then forgive. Forgiveness can be a tricky thing to practice. But I've learned a couple of things about forgiveness over the years. First, when we forgive something, someone, it has nothing to do with them. It's not about the wrongdoing. It doesn't excuse their actions. It doesn't mean there shouldn't be consequences for their actions. It doesn't mean we have to stay in a harmful situation. Forgiving others is putting down the pain. Letting go of the bitterness. Resting from the suffering. So that we can walk in love again. Because whether we forgive a wrongdoer or not, usually the wrongdoer is sleeping just fine at night. Right? What's that old saying? You know, having bitterness towards someone is like drinking poison and hoping that they die. Right? <laughs> Forgiveness is about putting down the pain, letting go of the bitterness so that we can walk in love. And the second thing I learned about forgiveness is that it is challenging to forgive others. It's even more challenging sometimes to forgive ourselves. So we have to practice forgiving others and forgiving ourselves with small things. Small things. Chris Klein uh, goes to the 8 o'clock service. I had to apologize to him this morning. Last week, I promised to send him Ed Uhas' email so, so they could get in touch about a thing that needed done. I didn't write it down. And if you don't write it down, it didn't happen. Especially on Sunday morning, right? So I forgot. So I apologized to Chris this morning. Now, Chris wasn't upset. It was a small thing. He had already taken care of it himself. It was all good. He forgave me instantly. But I have to forgive myself for letting someone down. And yeah, it's a small thing. But if I practice forgiving myself with a little thing, I build resilience and capacity to forgive myself the big things too. So we love. We identify with Jesus. We forgive others and ourselves. And last but definitely not least, is enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. I love this one. Turns out enthusiasm comes from uh, two Greek words, en, E-N, and theos, T-H-E-O-S. En means in, it means I-N, and theos means God. So in, in theos is in God, or full of God. Enthusiasm is being full of the divine. The same energy that created all of this wondrous creation. It's being full of that. And that could be challenging too. Um, picture with me a Monday morning and you forgot to buy coffee over the weekend. Some of you are like, Father Jason, you're supposed to talk about heaven, not about hell. <laughs> but picture with me, Monday morning, forgot to buy coffee over the weekend. It's 40 degrees outside, 
and raining. It can be challenging to be enthusiastic on such a day. It can be challenging to meet that day with God's love and grace and hope and joy. Happened to me once in Omaha when I lived there. It was a Monday morning. It was about 40 degrees. It was rainy and cloudy. And I forgot to buy coffee over the weekend. I was headed to work. And I, I was, I was kind of looking forward to complaining about the weather all day. I was kind of looking forward. I'm good at that. I can complain about the weather with the best of them. I was looking forward to it. And I was in line, uh, in the, in the drive through line at the coffee shop. There was a car in front of me. And they paid and drove off. And I pulled up to the window. And I'd already made my order. And the person handed me a coffee and says, the guy in front of you paid for you. And I was grateful, and I was joyful, and I was a little disappointed because I couldn't complain about the weather all day anymore. <laughs> One little thing that we can be grateful for if we can find one little thing to be grateful for, we can tap into enthusiasm. We can be filled with God, filled with the divine energy. If we can just find one little thing to be grateful for. There may not be a more important spiritual practice than gratitude. The word Eucharist means to give thanks. The prayer we pray is called the great what could be more important than that? Find one little thing to be grateful for. And it's the path to living enthusiasm. And if you combine, combine, I don't know what the word combine is. Is that a word? No. I don't think that's a word at all. If you combine enthusiasm with forgiveness, with identifying with Jesus and with love, you're going to live a life full of abundance. No matter what, no matter what, no matter if the stock market goes up or down, no matter whether your boss recognizes your accomplishments or not, no matter whether you can find your way to compassion or not, if you love, if you identify with Jesus, if you forgive and practice enthusiasm, my brothers and sisters, you will live the life that Jesus has come to bring. For he came to bring us life and to bring it abundantly. Amen. Amen. Amen.